Let's find out how much fuel do the pilots take to get you to your destination. While the Boeing 737 can uplift as much as 21 tons of fuel, we just don't fill the tanks to full for each flight. The fuel represents a considerable amount of overall weight. As the weight indirectly increases the induced drag, we try to keep the dead weight to the minimum. For example, on the 737, the fuel penalty for carriage of extra fuel is approximately 2.5% per hour of flight. That means that if we were to uplift only an extra ton of fuel on a 4 hour flight, we would burn extra 100 kilos of fuel just because of the increased weight. For this reason, prior to every flight, the pilots go through the flight plans and after a careful consideration of weather, notices and aircraft status, decide on just how much fuel needs to be uplifted. The minimum legal amount of fuel needed for a flight is calculated by a planning software and printed on an operational flight plan, or OFB. This fuel consists of several items and accounts for different flight segments. I will explain each of them on an example flight from London Stansted to Barcelona. First item on the list is the taxi fuel. It amounts for the fuel needed to get from our stand to the departure runway. On the 737, the planned taxi fuel is normally around 200 kilos, which will allow us to taxi for around 15 minutes. At some airports, like Madrid Barajas for example, the taxi time may take significantly longer. If this is the case, the flight plan or the pilots need to take this into consideration when deciding on the fuel uplift. Once we take off, we need to have the fuel to get us from our departure airport all the way to the destination. We call this the trip fuel. London Stansted and Barcelona Airport are some 640 nautical miles apart, but as we don't fly directly in a straight line and have to follow the airway system, the departure and arrival routes, this needs to be accounted for. In total, we'll fly extra 110 nautical miles by following the route system. That's not all, wing component plays a significant role in the fuel planning. While the ground distance stays the same on a given route, we don't travel by ground. Wing components will influence the distance we need to travel in the air, so-called air distance. Headwind on our route will increase the air distance, while tailwind will decrease it. It's like with a boat trying to go up the stream or down with it. In our case, the average headwind component of just 8 knots will give us an additional air distance of 20 nautical miles, increasing the time spent airborne and the total trip fuel. Another factor is our cruising altitude. The flight plan has us planned at flight level 370 or 37,000 feet. The planned trip fuel will only be accurate if we fly at the planned cruising altitude. All in all, the trip fuel from Stansted to Barcelona amounts for 4,900 kilos. Not everything always goes according to the plan, so we cannot just uplift the taxi and trip fuel as it would leave us on vapors landing in Barcelona. That's why we have to legally have some additional fuel reserved for contingencies. The first item is called just that, the contingency fuel, and is reserved for unplanned route changes due to air traffic control or weather avoidance along the route. The contingency fuel amounts for 5% of the trip fuel, but is always at least 200 kilos. If you are wondering where the 200 kilos will get you, well not that far, as the CFM56, the jet engine powering the 737, will burn it in 5 minutes. Another situation we need to be prepared for and account in our fuel planning is a diversion. Sometimes it may happen that our destination airport closes. This could be caused by various reasons, like bad weather, airport accident or system malfunction. Alternate destination airport needs to be selected and filed in a flight plan where we can divert to and land safely in the case Barcelona closes. In our operational flight plan, we need to account for the amount of fuel needed to get from our destination airport all the way to the selected alternate airport. We call it the alternate fuel. To keep the fuel uplift to a minimum, usually the nearest suitable airport is filed in the flight plan and accounted for in the fuel planning but the pilots need to carefully consider the weather forecast and airport information and decide if the planned destination alternate is suitable. In our case, the Girona airport was filed in our flight plan as our alternate airport and additional 1400 kilos of fuel was accounted for. 
Should the Girona airport not meet the minimum weather requirements, or should we deem the airport for any other reason not suitable, we would decide on a different destination alternate. If that's the case, we would call our airline operations to change the flight plan and we would need to uplift fuel to the different alternate, like Valencia or Alicante. If the weather is good, the process of checking the destination and alternates for weather takes only a couple of minutes. When the weather is not so great though, this may take us much longer to evaluate what the best alternate is. The last item on the list is the final reserve fuel. By definition, it is the minimum fuel required to fly for 30 minutes at 1500 feet above the alternate airport. This on the 737 amounts for approximately 1100 kilos of fuel and varies slightly depending on the weight. We should never eat into the final reserve fuel. If at any time it is calculated that we would land at the nearest suitable airport with fuel below the final reserve, we will need to declare fuel emergency. If we sum up all the required fuel items, we will get so-called block fuel. The block fuel is the bare legal minimum we have to uplift for our trip from London Stansted to Barcelona. If everything goes according to the plan, we will burn the taxi and trip fuel and we will land with contingency, alternate and final reserve fuel in Barcelona. Even though the minimum legally required block fuel has a buffer built in for unplanned contingency situations, it is up to the pilots to decide whether this minimum is acceptable or not. The pilots factor in their experience with both departure and destination airports, carefully study the weather en route and at destination, check if the airplane has any deferred defects influencing the fuel burn and so on. Also, since the passengers pay to get to their destination and not to any of the alternate airports, we try to minimize the likelihood of the diversion. If we were to take the bare minimum required amount of fuel for our flight with marginal weather at the destination, any sort of delay would quickly make us to divert to our alternate. By having some extra fuel gives us time which we can use to delay our approach and wait around for weather improvement. The decision of how much extra fuel needs to be carried is always a fine balance between the flight safety and flight economy. I hope that you learned something new today. If you'd like to know more about the aircraft systems and specifically more about the 737, download our 737 handbook app where you can benefit from interactive simulations, technical articles and videos.